Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're back with the Lich Master Heinrich Kemmler going to be facing off against uh, Norska, who's actually being played by Sakarma of Total Brohammer. I'll have a link down to his channel in the description below. He runs it with John Ton, of course, for those of you guys who don't know. Uh, very, both very, very good players, so I definitely recommend you go check their channel out. Uh, Kemmler today against Throg, so let's have some fun. Uh, Kemmler, more and more, I'm thinking, is starting to be a competitive pick in in some matchups, and I never thought I'd say those words, but Krell is just such a powerhouse, and Kemmler himself is really cheap, so uh, he comes with some really nice buffs. Uh, one of you had pointed out that uh, this, this Master of the Dead is disabled in melee, and you're correct. Chaos Tomb Blade is enabled in melee, so unfortunately you can't stack them, but what that does mean is that Kemmler is going to be providing a replenishment aura whether he's in melee or not, so at that in and of itself is nice. Chaos Tomb Blade also gives plus 5 melee attack when you combine with something like a uh, Corpse Cart, you get plus 10 melee attack in total, which is very nice considering that uh, the Vampire units tend to have very poor combat stats overall. In terms of the rest of the army, we've got a front line mix of skeleton warriors, skeleton spears, second line of grave guard with the sternsmen in the center, of course the corpse cart, Kemmler. We've also got an array of knights, so two units of blood knights, Varix reavers, and we've also got the dire pack here, the anti-large hounds. For Sakarma's build, he's got Throg, who's probably the best pick in this matchup. Vampires, as some of you pointed out in my Beastman video the other day, don't have access to Lore of Fire. Beastmen don't either, by the way, but uh, anyway, so uh, Throg's a pretty safe pick in this matchup. He's got a familiar Balefiend Lore of Fire, just in case of things like Terror Geist, and of course, the Vampires have plenty of regenerating units, so that's pretty much always a smart pick. The rest of his army is going to be a mix of Famir with Great Weapons and Marauder Berserkers. He's got two Marauder Hunters, mar one unit of regular Marauders, and two Norskin Ice Wolves, so let's get the battle rolling in uh, full gear here. And, uh, yeah, overall, the idea with this Undead Army is to, you just have so many bodies to throw at the Norskins that uh, they just don't have enough staying power to hang around that long. Even though they'll end up getting a lot of kills and munching through most of your army, uh, the idea here is you have just such a huge anvil that your hammers, uh, these uh, various units of knights going around, can really get the damage done on the high value points. And, of course, Krell himself, an absolute powerhouse going to be a great value generator as well. You can see Skeleton Spearmen running in here, no fear of course, because they have no life to lose, and uh, they're going to get absolutely pummeled by these Vermeer and Berserkers, uh, as intended. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get things kicking off. You can see the Varix Reavers and the Hounds both going to be charging in here. Uh, looks like uh, Cascading Fire Cloak giving some extra melee defense and Flaming Sword of Ruin also going to go down. That will give a nice timing burst, especially against these Varix Reavers who do have the standard regeneration trait. However, we're going to bring in the Blood Knights uh, for a nice charge here, so just a huge engagement developing. We put that Overcast, Dance Macabre, give everybody in this uh, pocket just a ton of extra melee attack. And look at the damage these Femir are taking. We've also summoned up Krell in here. He's uh, got his sights set on that Femir Bale Fiend who's trying desperately to escape here. And oh man, Femir, you better not get in Krell's way, man. He'll just he'll just pop your head right off. But uh, anyway, a very nice burning skull from coming down from Sakarma, roasting out a whole bunch of skeletons. Uh, all across the line here, the Berserkers definitely getting a lot of kills. Uh, this unit of Blood Knights getting caught out a little bit here by uh, Norsk and Ice Wolves and Throg and Fimir Warriors. There's a lot of resources being invested in chasing these guys, so I'm like, okay, let's see how long we can keep them alive and just keep these forces tied up while we start to clean up this flank a little bit. You can see we were able to pretty much sh shatter the Hounds on this side without too much uh, fuss. The Varix Reavers easily got into the back line here, and uh, Sakarma and I were discussing after the fact, and uh, yeah, he said that definitely bringing these uh, range units, especially with the short range, these uh, Marauder Hunters with throwing axes, was a bit of a mistake, and already we can see that is the case. These guys have been shut down. The other unit also got chased off by Skeleton Warriors, and uh, yeah, at this point, the Berserkers and the Marauders starting to get isolated a little bit and taken out. Uh, the Femir are all kind of being thrown into this Death Star in the back line here. One unit did get, did get taken down pretty effectively, and, uh, yeah, at this point, Kemmler is somewhere in here. I can hear him shouting about uh, Krell and all that, but uh, speaking of which, Krell's out here in the back line helping to deal with some of these said Femir as these uh, Norsk and Ice Wolves and more kind of screen them out. Uh, Sakarma's trying to pull away a little bit here. 
But uh, yeah, Norsk and Ice Wolves do count as large entity models, so these Blood Knights will be getting their bonus against them. And without the support of the Fenir, those uh, Norsk and Ice Wolves will start to crumble very, very quickly. They actually get terrified away by Krell. That's one of the best parts about Krell is that he causes terror, and because you can summon him right behind your enemy, you can get very quick terror routes if you summon and then rear charge an enemy unit. The fact that he's an absolute powerhouse in melee is also a, a great uh, bonus. Another overcast dance for Cobb and Krell up to 81 uh, melee attack himself. So Krell, in terms of those of you who are wondering, did get a plus 20 bonus versus large in the recent patch, which is what makes him just such an increased powerhouse. I mean, he was already good before. He also gets knocked around a lot less. Uh, he was a beneficiary of some of the infantry mo uh, lords and heroes getting more uh, mass. So he gets knocked around less. He's got a bonus versus large. Just a super scary character uh, on par with somebody like uh, Ungrim Iron Fist. But uh, yeah, at this point, we're trying to finish off the Femir. Obviously, Throg himself is going to be a big issue. But uh, you can see Krell getting in here. Looks like he's going to try and get some attacks in on uh, Throg, perhaps. Ooh, looks like he's going after that Femir instead. Uh, the Blood Knights are definitely taking some damage here, but they're doing some damage in return. This one managed to get an XP Chevron, uh, very close to picking up its second there as it starts to do some damage against these Vermeer here. It is taking some pretty severe damage, and that second one just popped off there. So, uh, yeah, we're down another unit of Vermeer. So, at this point, it's just the Bale Fiend, one unit of Vermeer, and Throg left. There was another unit of Vermeer that got tossed out here that's just kind of getting bogged down in skeletons, and, uh, yeah. Spide Femir's very strong stats, I mean, when they're surrounded like this, and Skeleton Spears, especially over a long period of time, will be able to do some damage to them. We've got the Sternsman, relatively healthy, full 80 unit models. Well, not full 80, but they actually have 90, I think, base, but, uh, yeah, still very healthy. Throg is uh, going after my various units pretty aggressively here at this point, though uh, Krell's at his healing cap, uh, the Varix Reavers are nearly at their healing cap. The uh, Dire Pack are at their, their healing cap, so we're going to be losing a lot of our mobile units uh, relatively soon, and a lot of the heavy hitters, so maybe uh, if uh, he can wait till Krell degenerates, uh, he can come back into this, but it's going to be doubtful. I'll fast forward a little bit through the late game here, as you can see Sakarma's trying to pull his Fenir Warriors, kind of form up a bit of a last stand, but those Berserkers do get taken down by the uh, Konigstein Stalkers. Though I forgot to mention, one of the units of Skeleton Warriors was indeed these Konigstein Stalkers. They've got a little bit of extra armor and poison attacks. They also have better combat stats, obviously. Pretty nice little regiment of renown. I actually quite like them right now. But uh, yeah, these Vermeer have been routed off. Throg came over here to reunite with his uh, Bale Fiend. There's a few more uh, Marauder Hunters with axes and a few more Vermeer as well. So we'll continue to fast forward through this late game engagement. And uh, yeah, overall, very happy with uh, this build. I've, I've used it a couple of different times against uh, Norska. I haven't really tried it against too many other factions, but I have a feeling it could be good. Kemmler, uh, against like a strong air power faction, for example, Kemmler might be a bit risky because he's a little bit goonable. Although if you have plenty of Blood Knights and other supporting units on the ground, it can almost be a, a like a nice bait tactic because you, they charge down on a Kemmler, you summon up Krell right there, pin him in with some Knights, and then all of a sudden they're in big trouble. Uh, could potentially work out, but uh, yeah, you can see we're getting the final engagement underway. These Vermeer are charging in here. Kemmler's looking like he's uh, doing something. Uh, Vermeer Balefiend also casting an overcap. Excuse me, uh, burning head there. Roasting out a whole bunch of uh, undead. But at this point, I mean, these Varix Reavers, they're still, still online here. Charging through, finishing off the Marauder Hunters. Overrunning into the uh, Vermeer Balefiend Lore of Fire. Just trying to fish, finish him off at this point, so uh, yeah, we'll fast forward a little bit more through this as it's pretty much just going to be Throg slugging it out with a whole bunch of undead dudes. But uh, yeah, the the uh, Varix Reaver is definitely being very key there, kind of leading leading Throg on a wild goose chase as we finish off the Femir. Then Throg's going to come in here once again and uh, start slugging it out, kicking some skeletons in the face and uh, getting tired. But at this point, his leadership goes without the support of that Bale Fiend there, and it is a victory for the vampires. So, well played to Sakarma. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. In terms of the army breakdown there, uh, yeah, the one unit of Blood Knights did get caught out pretty hard and taken out. Uh, they definitely weren't cost-effective, but they at least kept a lot of those forces occupied for some time while we were able to collapse the infantry very aggressively. You can see the Marauders. The Berserkers, at least, they get a lot of kills, but they just wear out quickly against this many bodies, especially Graveguard. Graveguard do quite well in that matchup. 
and and uh, heavy cavalry as well is kind of the bane of berserkers if they get hit by a couple really nice heavy cavalry charges that can be the end of them so uh, the blood knights uh did get an ap buff in the last patch so their ap damage is a little bit better and as a result i think they're going to be a better option against norska than say like a terrorgeist for example because number one they're not weak to fire now granted they don't regenerate so there's that weakness but uh, they're going to be better against the infantry, the low armor infantry of Norska, and they can handle themselves pretty well if you cycle charge from here and pick favorable engagements, try and get, uh, try and wear away the infantry support, and then get favorable engagements. So the one unit of Blood Knights, you can see two chevrons, 64 kills, very well, and the Varix Reavers, of course, uh, 118 kills. Definitely one of my favorite units of uh, heavy cavalry, and that's saying something. As you guys know, I love my heavy cavalry. So uh, anyway, Dire Pack also did pretty well, helping to finish off those Vermeer. Uh, Graveguard, absolute MVPs. The Stern's been just super strong units still. Uh, 49 kills on the Conic Stein Stalkers, not too bad at all. And of course, Kemler and Krell both being MVPs there uh, for Sakarma. Vermeer with Grey Epins, definitely a super solid pick in this matchup. Uh, Throg is also a solid pick, as is the Famir Belfin Lore of Fire. So, like most of his army, I think when we again when we were discussing after the battle, uh, I think the one thing that we'd cut is the Marauder Hunters with the uh, axes and bring something else. Maybe just bring some more meat for the front line, uh, more more Marauders to cut through this chaff, and maybe keep the Berserkers from getting worn out so quickly. Uh, maybe that would work better, or who knows? Uh, there's a multitude of different things you could do. It's a very dynamic matchup, and it's still developing, certainly. Um, so let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of this matchup? Have you played it all? What's been your experience? Uh, do you think Kemmler is competitive? Are we going to go that far and say that Kemmler's competitive, at least in this matchup? Perhaps. I'll have to test him out in some others and see how he does against, like, say, the Tomb Kings, maybe, or the Lizardmen. See how Krell performs there. But, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you once again, and we'll see you next time.